How's it going? Adam Drake here, and today I'm going to talk and show you how I set the gear mesh for my Nitro vehicles. Sounds simple enough, uh, but it's a really key and important part of your Nitro program. If the gear mesh is too tight, it can cause additional friction and kind of power loss and increase engine or operating temperature. And if the mesh is set too loose, you can cause failure to the clutch belt or spur gear. So when you have, say, your clutch bell and spur gear, you want the teeth to mesh to where you're getting, for the most part, the full engagement of the teeth with one another. If the mesh is too loose, when the engine engages uh, the power to the clutch, and then the clutch um, goes to then push the clutch bell, which then pushes the spur gear, if that is too loose you can actually cause failure or you can you can knock a tooth off either the clutch belt or the spur gear so it's really important that you have the proper amount of backlash um, i always try to err slightly on the side of the mesh being a little bit on the tight side versus being too loose um, but another really key part is making sure that you use thread lock in the proper areas, um, lock washers in the proper areas, because when we run nitro, you can run for extended periods of time. Sometimes local races, the mains are only 15 minutes, but some of the bigger races, it's 45 minutes to an hour, or even on practice days, you may go run for 45 minutes to an hour straight, and you wanna make sure that that mesh stays consistent. If you don't have the screws tight and you're not using the proper lock washers and thread lock in the uh, correct areas, um, the mesh can then move and then you can cause damage to your clutch bell, spur gear, and could be even worse if the engine moves enough to where the, the engine and clutch disengage from the spur gear, it can actually pull the carburetor open and you can even cause excessive damage to the engine. So. Again, sounds like a really simple and basic thing, setting gear mesh, we've, we've all kind of done this, um, but just wanna kind of sh point out or show a few uh, key things that hopefully will allow you to ensure your mesh stays uh, consistent over long runs and is also properly set. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the screws on both the top and bottom side and basically show you if I was to start with everything kind of new um, or after like a fresh rebuild. I'm gonna take one of these screws all the way out because I wanna show you on the top side for the three by 12 millimeter cap screws, I also use a three millimeter lock washer. Now, you can also use thread lock on these screws if you choose to, but with the lock washer, um, I normally don't use thread lock on the top side uh, just for the screws on the bottom. As far as the thread lock goes, for all my nitro stuff, I use a 50-50 mix of uh, red and blue thread lock. So you can see it kind of has a purple color to it. I feel like blue in a lot of cases uh, is not quite strong enough and red sometimes can be difficult um, to break loose. I would err on the side of it being too tight um, versus being too loose. Um, as far as I, I would rather have my car be difficult to take apart than have it fall apart during the race. So um, again, 50-50 mix of red and blue. Um, let me go ahead and loosen the bottom side just to start with everything fresh here. All right, so normally I will put the engine onto the mount when it's out of the car. And then for the most part, when I adjust my mesh, like as the spur gear 
or clutch bell slightly wear. I'll do the majority of that from the top because again, I'm not using thread lock on the top. I pull the engine in and out all the time when I'm servicing the clutch or clutch bearings. Um, and then the screws from the bottom are being thread locked in. So once they're kind of set in place, usually you have enough movement from the top side that um, you can kind of make fine, fine adjustments with the mesh. Um, what I like to do is basically push the engine towards the back of the mount and also slightly twist it towards um, like the driver side of the car. So I'll do that and tighten down these screws. And I'll explain in a minute why I kind of twist the engine slightly. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and I'll start by removing just one of these screws. Put a fair bit of thread lock on the screw. I like to always then just kind of work the thread lock around to make sure it's kind of fully coated the end of the screw. And then I'm not going to crank that all the way down yet because I'm going to go ahead and remove and thread lock all four of these screws that are going to go into the bottom. Same thing, make sure I kind of work the thread lock equally around the threads of the screw. And if you have to break these screws loose to readjust your mesh, you're going to want to just apply a little bit more thread lock because once you've kind of broken that thread lock loose and it's dried, you'll want to uh, put just a little bit of fresh thread lock on there. That way when it dries again, it has a better bond. Now we'll do the last screw. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm going to kind of push the engine forward. And what I'm trying to do is basically make sure that the mount or these screws are squared up in the slots. So by pushing it forward, it should push both of those screws to where it's touching the edge of the chassis. And I'll tighten just the one screw down initially and I will, with my left index finger, uh, hold the clutch bell in place, and then I will try to rock the spur gear back and forth. Now I have just a tiny bit of backlash, but it's a little bit tight. You can hear with the mesh, it's just a little bit tight. So I'll actually take this 2.5 wrench, use it a, kind of like a pry bar, and just slightly put a little bit of tension on the flywheel to loosen up that mesh. Then when I go the tight, so I tighten this screw initially, I'll go across, tighten this front screw, and I'll go back, tighten this, cross again, go to the front. And then when I'm, I have all of those snug I'm going to just check the mesh. I'm going to hold the clutch bell 
and just kind of tick this back and forth. There should be basically the gap as if you were to have like a sheet of paper in between the clutch bell and spur gear. So just barely ticks back and forth. Again, I would rather err um, on the side of being slightly too tight with the mesh versus being too loose. And then I have this carbon tool to make this more of like a T-handle. And I like to really crank these screws down. That's maybe a little too tight. Um, as you can see, I broke the tip off. But I'm going to grab another wrench and then we'll finish these three screws. All right, so same thing. We're going to kind of go in a cross pattern. And we have all those cranked down. I will check the mesh one more time. Feels really, really good. We'll check by spinning the car. Everything's really free. And now I'll explain why when I tighten the screws down from the top, I kind of twisted the engine a little bit. The reason for that is, again, I like to set the screws on the bottom that go through the chassis into the mount with thread lock, make sure that they're super tight so that I don't have to loosen up and adjust those screws very often. And by twisting the engine slightly to essentially make the mesh looser, it's now gonna give me a range of when the clutch bell and spur gear wear slightly, I'm able to twist the engine back and tighten up that mesh without having to loosen these screws on the bottom. So just a little tip, um, again, just, just not wanting to have to break loose that thread lock. A lot of times with using the 50-50 mix and if you tighten the screws down super tight, sometimes you may need to use a lighter or a small torch to kind of heat up and soften the thread lock on the bottom side before breaking it loose. That way you don't break a tip like, like I did when I was tightening that down. Um, but again, just a super important and critical part of your nitro program. You see it a lot of times where guys land a big jump, the engine slightly moves, and it can move in either directions. Typically, it tends to move uh, to where the mesh is a little bit looser. If the mesh is looser, you run into the problem where you can knock a tooth off the clutch bell or spur gear.